Welcome to your game night. Jerome Andrews and I having a great time telling a few stories that really can't be told on television. You're a, you're a, you're a funny man. <laughs> Jerome is with us for the night. He's actually going to tone down his stand-up comedy and share with us some instruction. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jerome. You've been on the show a couple times. You mm -hmm. teach DA points, mm -hmm. and uh, you're out of Annandale Golf Club in Southern California. Give us a, a sense of your history with the game. Well, I uh, started working with David Ledbetter on my own game at the age of eight, so I sort of knew David when nobody knew David from 1978 on, and just had have had a phenomenal experience of. Uh, not only uh, witnessing or experience David's methods and how is his teaching has evolved through the years with him working with me, but also I worked with David as a senior instructor at his personal academy, Lake Nona and Champions Gate, for almost eight years. So you have been with the best, you've worked with the best, you've learned from the best, and we will learn from Jerome as your game night progresses. You have many great things to say about Jerome's teaching. Very We've had a, 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 the fortune of having him on Academy Live and your game night many times. How did this relationship start between you two? I uh, have been a longtime disciple of David Ledbetter from a very young age, and uh, I was one of David's senior instructors out at Lake Nona where Coach Holtz plays all the time and I met Coach Holtz uh, over 10 years ago and just developed a relationship with him and uh, we've uh, gotten together periodically ever since. All right. Which, uh, I think we got to, to know what you guys are working on, we got to see it displayed here. We got to ask Coach Holtz to take well, us Well, how away. it really happened when David <laughs> said I was given his academy a bad reputation being a late known and swinging so bad, so he assigned Jerome, and he has really been tremendous. He really knows it. I'm not very talented, but he is a great teacher. We're back on Academy Live, and now it's time for our Computer Associates Innovative Idea. So here you have a buried greenside bunker shot with the pin cut relatively close to the green. You must get this ball up and down to give yourself an opportunity to stay in the match or stay in the tournament you're playing in. So you have to have this ball come out with more control, much more softer, so that when it hits the green, it has a much better opportunity of stopping relatively close to the hole to give yourself an opportunity to get the ball up and down. So what you're going to do is keep your club face open, just as you would a normal bunker shot. Your stance is a little bit wider to give yourself a little bit more solid base, a little bit more knee flex to give yourself a little bit more solid base. And everything about this bunker shot is the same as, a, as, as, as if you were hitting a typical shot with the ball not being buried. But what you're going to do is, this is gonna, called the recoil, where you're going to actually make contact with the sand and recoil or pull the club back. And what this does is deadens the shot. The ball will come out softer, higher, and uh, have a much better opportunity of, of landing much closer to the pin. Well, Jerome Hal Morris is going to be here soon. He would call that a check swing. You call <laughs> yeah, it a recoil. It's exactly. the first time I've ever seen that technique. What's so important for people to realize, what we just talked about in the previous segment, is that, you know, everybody wants to feel connected through impact, okay? Right. For accuracy, distance, power. But if you're connected, so to speak, where the club, the arms, and the body swing and turn together in the move away, you will be disconnected through impact. So in order to be connected through impact, you, the, the club and arms must first swing independent of the body, and that's because the club and the arms have a greater distance to cover to reach their top of the backswing position than do the shoulders have to turn and the hips have to rotate. And so when you get the club head, the arms, the shoulders, and the hips completing the backswing together, then those components can swing and turn through impact together, balance, accuracy, speed, controlling your distance with your irons, all those great things. We hope you enjoyed your playing lesson with Jack Nicholas. How can you not? This is Jerome Andrews. He's been with us all evening for your game night. And, and obviously the greatest player of all time. He focuses on the fundamentals, keeping it simple, stupid. I mean, there's nothing easier than that. Right, exactly. It's just the thing about, you know, I, uh, instructing, I cannot look at a golf swing without going, okay, if I had the opportunity to work with this person, what would I work on with this person? How would I go about doing it? And the thing is with uh, what you saw with Jack, um, talked about how Jack Grout, his instructor, longtime instructor, great instructor, used to hold his head all the time to keep his head still. And it's just, Kelly and I, you and I were talking about before the, sh before the show how, you know, that could be related to why, you know, here we're talking about the greatest player in the world, 18 majors, but everybody talked about how J Jack's wedge game may not have been up to par with his ball striking ability. And just, it's so interesting. It's all about, it's all about the cause and effect with the, uh, with the swing. And um, by keeping Jack's head so still, 
okay, and if you, you can see this more clearly from the down the line view, if you do not move your head, if you do not swivel your eyes a little bit, it, this doesn't allow the correct rotation of the arms initially in the move away, okay? So therefore, if your head is still, your arms can't rotate as well, the club face goes back shut or hooded, yep. okay? And then what that also causes is your shaft angle is very, very steep. Now, as I mentioned before in a previous segment, our body simply reacts to the angle and direction of this shaft in which it swings and, other, and, and the club face. And so if the club face position is shut and the shaft angle is steep, we have to compensate with our body to get this club back online and we have to add loft to the club coming through impact. So from the face on view, what you'll see here, shut club face going back, shaft angle steep, our spot, you have to use a lot of leg drive to keep our body centered and add loft to the club and it's just a lot of compensations and a lot of athletic moves to get the club back to the ball. In honor of Dave Pels, we will focus this segment on short game and you have a, um, an intriguing, a fascinating, a very helpful uh, aid that will help us around the greens. Unfortunately, it's not something you can implement right. into your golf bag when you're competing, but right. uh, we'll call it our Glen Levitt short game tip this week. What do you have for us? It involves a tape measure. A tape measure. Well, um, the more vivid you can see the line of your putt, okay, when you're out playing or practicing, the more helpful it is. It just gives yourself a better opportunity to, to obviously roll your ball on the intended line to make more putts. And so I learned this exercise a number of years ago with Dr. Bob Winters at, mm -hmm. at the Ledbetter Academy. And it's involving a tape measure, and you just want to roll your tape measure out to about five or six feet, okay? And just go through your normal routine as if you were on the golf course, actually lining up a putt and trying to establish your line in which you want the ball to roll on when you're, when you're out on the course. There you go. And so all you're going to do, okay, is just very relaxed, normal routine, you're not staring at this intently, all you're going to do is get down and read this putt and all you're going to do is look at this, look at the bright fluorescent or, uh, yellow color here. And after about 10, 15, 20 seconds, it may take a little longer for other people, a bluish tint starts to appear. So I'm seeing a bluish tint right into the middle of the hole right now. Other, I'm seeing another color and the line comes from the end of the tape measure right to the hole in a bluish tint and then after about 15 20 seconds you just want to move over to the left and you see that same bluish tint without the aid of the tape measure and so you can just do this exercise and when you're out on the course it's amazing how this tint will show up and help you see the line of your putt better yeah and obviously you're not doing it in competition but this right. is this is an a wonderful drill because it doesn't even take me two seconds to find that right. blue tint and extend it to the hole. So related to Coach's backswing tendencies that we've worked on and now helped him get a better feel for, Coach has always had a little tendency in the downswing where his hands have worked out towards the ball. And this is why he's lost distance as well and faded it, okay? So now a great drill to help him give him the proper feel in the downswing is to put your left forearm above or over your right. Swing the club back. Keep the resistance in the left arm. So the left arm is pushing back behind your right shoulder, okay, behind you against the right arm to prevent your hands from working out towards the ball. So now the hands come as close as possible down to the right thigh. Then, you're, then this gives you a great sensation of the forearms and the core, your hips and torso turning through to the target. The swing is a gradual buildup of speed that's unleashed, you know, a foot from the ball and a foot through the ball. Any tension or extreme force at the top of the backswing, you know how many times have we seen that in amateurs right. that we've watched, okay, usually throws the hands out and then it's just nothing but compensations to get back to the ball from there. So in order to pick up much more distance to get your club arms and body much more in sync, you need to be able to hinge the wrist as soon as possible in the move away. So the club head swings back, we push down on the grip end so that when the left arm is just below parallel to the ground, the shaft is perpendicular to the ground. And this allowed Coach Holtz to rip it, fire his right side, stay more in balance, and pick up those 10 to 15 yards that he needed. And hopefully this will help you at home as well. What you want to focus on to help your lower body and your upper body be more in sync with the club and the arms to complete the backswing together, to work through impact together, is focus your belt buckle at the ball, okay? And what you can also do too is even use this T again, Kelly, here. Yeah. This, okay, keep that T pointed at the ball, belt buckle at the ball, and hinge the wrist, swing the, club in the, swing the club head first, swing the club in the arms independent of the body. Now you're in sync in this position as opposed to this position. 
And that's not even a one cent teaching aid right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Jerome, what do you see here? Well, with his posture, his hands are set too much forward towards the target, okay, to the, to the left of the ball, which puts his weight too much um, towards the target as well, set in his left side. Now, here we go, just as I explained, classic one-piece move away. Club, arms, body, too much together. So when the left arm just gets right around parallel to the ground, we're going to draw some lines up here, and uh, you're going to see that what you should be seeing is that the left arm and the shaft of the club should form a 90-degree angle to the ground and uh, you can see that his shaft is nowhere near a 90 degree angle there and as a result you're not seeing much of his right shoulder as all, at all which means he's finished turning okay so as you're going to see from here that his left shoulder only moves a couple more frames and then I've, I've drawn another line here on his left shoulder to show you his body is done turning now his arms lift independent see how his shoulder or his torso didn't move at all uh -huh. so there's all the independent arm lift which causes a longer backswing than necessary his weight reverts more to the left side and now his arms and club are lagging behind the rotation of the torso so his lower body fires okay look how far his lower body and his upper torso are ahead of the club and the arms now we're going to draw a circle right around his head and you're going to see his recovery or his compensate or his compensation is that he's using his head as leverage to back up well right of the circle there so that he can have some semblance of being connected and some semblance of you know trying to get the club face back to the back to the ball. One of coach's tendencies is that he initiates the downswing too much with the lower body or his hips, okay, which throws his hands outside relative to the target line, hard to recover from here, causes weak ball flight, a little bit of a fade. So Coach Holt called me one evening and he was describing that exact ball flight and he really wanted to play well the next day. So we talked about his tendencies and understanding what coach needs to work on. I just gave him, gave him a, described a drill where you just put the left leg over the right and just either hit half shots like this off of a tee with a short iron or uh, just uh, do, it, do that in practice swings and uh, that gave coach a great feel. Jerome Andrews from Annandale Golf Club in Southern California and he is going to help Mark Dodson. What adjustment should be made to hit a driver into a strong headwind? Hitting irons, you can move the ball back and take another club, but what about the driver? So all we're going to do is just lower the tee, choke down on the club, and then just you want to step behind the ball, make this part of your routine. Just take a couple practice swings where you're feeling that your speed is lessened. So a good, good visual or a good key is just, okay, instead of 100% effort, we're just going to swing at 65 70%. Because you create less speed, the ball will come out lower and not create as much spin. Excellent, excellent suggestions.